How can you roll uphill? How did a stick save an army? And how can you walk on a ball? make a profit. You can't. Nobody can always make a profit. If anybody was going to make a profit, it would be you, Carol, I'm if, sure. If yeah. I can show you how I can always make a profit, yes. will you lay some money on this? Yes. Yeah. Well 20, worth. Pence, 20 pence each? Well worth 20p. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right, now then, if you could make a profit, Fred, what would you want to make a profit on? What I love more than anything in the world is chocolate. All right, Loads chocolate, chocolate bars in front of you. Gaz, yeah. what about you? Uh, pens. I'd like to make a profit on my pens. All right. OK, now then, I have some matchsticks here. How many matchsticks have you I got? You have nine. nine. If I can make that into ten, will I make a profit? You yes, certainly clearly, will. Yeah. All right, then would you like to follow these simple instructions? Following you now. Take this one here, yes. lay it like so. Yes. Yep, done that. Done that. Yep. Take this one here, lay it like so. Done that. And finally... Done that too. Yep. Take this and put it here. And what have you got? Ten. ten. Thank you very much. I've made ten out of nine matchsticks and I can always make a profit. Yeah, but I'll have your money too. <laughs> How did a stick save an army? A how that goes back 2,400 years. Come with me to ancient Greece. And there, 400 years before the birth of Christ, the Spartans down here were fighting a war with the invading Persians up here. And often they needed to get messages from Spartan HQ down here to their commanders on the front line. But of course there were nasty Persian spies trying to intercept those messages. So the Spartans had to invent the world's first ever secret coding machine, the first ever cipher. And that was it? Fred, that's it, not a cipher, that's just a stick, a broom handle or something. Oh, honestly, It Fred. is a stick, it is a handle, but it's a very clever one because it's called the skitali and how it works is this, you see. What they used to do was wrap a strip of leather thong around their stick or skitali and write the message carefully on it. Mm. But as well as the message, they would also write on the tape, because you can make one of these yourself, they'd write on the tape a completely meaningless jumble of other letters so that if this particular tape got into the enemy hands, the hands of a spy, it would mean nothing, because it's just a hopeless jumble of letters. doesn't mean a thing. Mm. Then the generals would have to get someone totally unimportant, a real oik, to deliver this to the front line. Private Jones, come here, you ass, nasty, horrible little man. Sir? Deliver this very secret message to Commander Vorderman on the front line, but do not read it. Won't read it. Secret message, sir. Off you go, you nasty, horrible little man. But even if Jones did read it... And even if he was a spy, it doesn't really matter, cos he couldn't understand it anyway. Uh, Commander Vordman, an incredibly secret message for you. I've read it, I can't understand a thing. Thank you. Uh, Private Jones, you are dismissed immediately. Off would go Private Jones. Meanwhile, Commander Vorderman would also have a stick, a skitali. It had to be of exactly the same diameter as the one I've got. She would wrap the thong or the tape around her stick, around her skitali. She would see all those meaningless letters, but, of course, if she tipped the skitali towards her, there on the top line was my secret message. What is it, Carol? Attack at dawn. And that's how a stick saved an army. How do you walk on a ball? It's not impossible, just very, very difficult. Making ball walking look very, very easy is Jackie Sison from the circus troupe Ra Ra Zoo. Jackie, where did ball walking actually start? Uh, it started in China many thousands of years ago and in medieval England when people used to walk on barrels. But surely ball walking is more difficult than a barrel. It is, because the ball can go anyway. In any direction. Yeah. What's the secret? How do you do it? Uh, the secret is to keep your weight right above the ball and to keep your feet moving and to control the ball rather than letting it control you. Now, to go forwards, you're walking backwards? Yes. And how about steering? Um, you can steer to the left, yeah. walking on top of the ball, and to the right. 
<laughs> now, do you think you could teach me to do this? No. <laughs> well, I'm asking you, Dianne. I think so. We've t um, people have taught elephants and bears to walk on balls. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I should be able yeah, to do it. That's different. <laughs> yeah, that's different. We haven't got elephant-sized feet. All right. Uh, so step up and get the ball moving. Yes. I have a feeling this could go horribly wrong. Go Ready? for it, Chop. Go on. Oh, there you go. Keep... Yes. Ah! I'm on my own. <laughs> no. Keep, keep under control. I'm trying to, I'm trying to. <laughs> right, now, how do, you, how do you get off? Right, come on forwards. Forward? <laughs> <laughs> like that? Well, I don't know if I was controlling the ball. I think it was controlling me, but I not bad so. for a first go. <laughs> no. Now, presumably this isn't something you can just do at home. No, this is a special concrete and fibreglass ball that's very heavy and very strong. Very um, heavy. Mm -hmm. So you can't do this with a football. Don't go trying it at home unless you've got a circus expert with you and the proper equipment and uh, the ability to learn something like this. So, Jackie, show us once again how you walk on a ball. That's how. And that's brilliant. Now, how can a fish help you to relax? This has absolutely nothing to do with eating fish. This has to do with very high technology. Now, I'm going to conduct a clinical experiment in the house studio. So, Gareth, if you could come back, please. Mm -hmm. Now, I've put some things over on your side of the table. There's a cocktail there. There's some sunshades. Oh, nice. You could put those on. Yeah. If you could just put those two little sensors please. around your fingers. Uh -huh. And then, finally, I've got some headphones there, which yep. are going to play Handel's water music. And I want you to think about being on the beach, the waves lapping against the shore, and trap you in a con world of contentment. Mm. Now, Fred, yes. what do you hate? What do you really, I really hate? I can't stand opera music. It you gets hate me it. going. I hate it. Hate what it. about games? Hate what do you hate? Can't stand cards, building things with cards. All right, I want you to tennis. build cards now, yes. a house of cards, a big house of cards, yes. listen to opera, yes. I get do it stressed. quickly, all right, all right, all right, don't keep on. <laughs> What on earth has this got to do with fish? Well, here we have Gareth in his relaxed world, Fred in a very tense world. Actually, this is all to do with a very new computer game, because most computer games you get very stressed, very tense, because you're trying to kill things and shoot things down and score points. This new computer game using fish works on exactly the opposite principle, because the more relaxed you are, the more likely you are to win the game. Now, Gareth and Fred are attached to finger sensors, which work in this way. They work on a principle of biofeedback, and that detects the brain's activity. And the more stressed and tensed up you are, the more activity there is. And so the finger sensors tell the computer that you are stressed and you don't progress forward. Let me show you what happens if you're relaxed. Now, this is a test run. You start as a fish. And then you evolve, you become a mermaid. The mermaid swims through the water until she gets to land and becomes a lady. The lady walks across the ground and eventually becomes an angel. She floats into the sky and if you are completely relaxed, you eventually become a star. So that's how the game works. Let's go back to our clinical experiment. Now Gareth's looking very happy over here. He's having a really good time. So if we can uh, just slip these on Hello. gently. Hi. You happy? It's nice in there. It yeah. is, isn't it? Mm. Now, you're, you're an angel at the moment, but I'm afraid <laughs> I have to tell you, Gareth, that your mm. bank manager phoned. Oh, no. Yeah, and you're in big, big trouble. Oh, no. Yes, oh, yes, yes. Can you see how you're slipping back? You're now a fish again. Oh. Not good news, not good news. What about this? this? Stupid game, I hope this. Oh, Fred. Oh, stupid game. Oh, honestly. Do you know, you know how you did? <sighs> It's a you never even became a mermaid, did you? Surprise, it's no. your fault. Oh, oh. suited you anyway. Now, if you would practice this computer game, it can teach you to be less stressed, it's more healthy for you to be less stressed, you become more relaxed, and that is how a fish can help you to unwind. How do you make a ginger nut sandwich? This is a cooking how of enormous simplicity. You need merely three ingredients. First of all, a packet of ginger nut biscuits. You will need some orange juice poured into a bowl and a tube of squirty cream. Three ing ingredients, three cooking actions. Dunking, squirting and squashing. Now, the dunking first. You just dunk all your ginger nut biscuits in the orange juice. Stick them in a bowl and give them a good dip around. Right, now... 
after a few seconds, 30 seconds to a minute or so, of the soaking, take your ginger nut biscuit, right? And this is, this is the, the other tricky bit, the squirty bit. <laughs> Squirt some cream on, couldn't be easier, huh? Then you repeat the process, all right? Take another one and squeeze that biscuit onto there. You oh, want to get a sandwich of biscuit, crazy. cream, oh, cream. biscuit. Nice. Got it? Right. Done, yes. Yes. More squirting. Squirty, squirty. Yeah. Wonderful. Dunking finish. and squeezing. That is Got very it? Easy. God, yeah, I wish right. I could cook. Squirting, <laughs> dunking yeah. and squeezing. Now, you I'm carry on really doing oh. this until you have built up Ooh. a fair row of Ooh. ginger nut biscuits and cream I'll like give so. a skill like this, I would. Cooking <laughs> made simple, yes, right? Now, and once you've finished your row, what you do is you cover the whole lot in squirty cream. Great fun, great mm. fun. And then spatulate it, we can say that, spatulate it all over <laughs> till it's nice and smooth and all the biscuits evenly covered. Mm. It looks really appetising. I can't wait to try that. OK, you guys, simple so far. Yes. This now. is the difficult bit, oh. right? Pay very careful attention. We are. The cooking happens like this. Oh. You take <laughs> what you've done so far, you open the fridge. Yes. The you, fridge. It's difficult, you put it in the fridge. Yeah. Okay? At what temperature? As cold as you can get for about an hour. And that's it. And in an hour's time, Ooh. you'll come out with something looking remarkably like that. And <laughs> it is the sweetest, stickiest, most lovely, yummy pudding you could possibly imagine. Is it really? Yeah, and it's got Ooh. this sort of toffee-like consistency. And not at all fattening. Not in the slightest. No. But look at that. You can, if you can oh, see that, yes. inside there's your biscuit cream, biscuit cream, biscuit cream. Have you ever get tried to try this? some? Oh, yes, of course, please. of course. You know, Carol, Fred, can you pass Certainly that will. to <laughs> size, Carol for me? the size of portions in this cat. Well, absolutely. If you're going to enjoy That's something, it. enjoy it. That's what I say. Fred, a lovely there you go. Now. Carol, tell me what you think. Mm. Can I have a big bite of this? Yeah, yeah, go on. Mm. Oh, I thought it might fall out. Fred, good? Two happy customers. And that's how you make a ginger nut sandwich. Very nice too. Now then, how can you roll uphill? Things don't roll uphill, Carol. They roll downhill. Quite right, Fred. You tell her. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, before you, I have a hill. How many matchboxes at that end? Six on either side mm -hmm. of this end. And how many at this end? Three, Three on either side that end. Yeah. So this is a hill. It's yeah. an incline, yeah. yes. All right. I have my anti-gravity roller. Put it at the bottom of the hill. Which way does it roll? Well, it appears to be rolling upwards, I grant you. It's yeah. a clever little trick. It only appears to. It's the an table's optical... on the tilt. Yeah, well done, Fred. It's Thank an optical you. illusion. Well spotted, uh, Table mate. on the tilt. I have a spirit level here. Bubble in the middle means the table is level. So, therefore, this is a hill. Do it again. If I put this at the bottom, mm. it rolls... Upwards. Uphill. You pushed it. How's it done? No, I'll show you how it's done. Now, the sticks are close together at the bottom yeah. and they're wide apart at the top. Yeah. So if you imagine that my hands are mimicking those sticks, now watch the middle of the anti-gravity roller. As the sticks get further apart, what happens to it? It appears to be going down. It is going down. All right, I stand corrected, it is going it down. It is going down. So this is actually rolling down, although it appears to be rolling up the hill. It's a clever little how trick, but surely that's the answer. It works because it is little. Well done, Fred. Well spotted, Thank mate. Thank you. Um, not exactly, Fred. If you'd like to bring the sticks with you, gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to another anti-gravity rolling device which I've been working on. This is a hill. Gareth, can you please go at that end and Fred at this end? Now, using your measuring stick, how many units high is it at this end? One, two, three, four. Four and at this end? At this end, it's six units high. So what Carol. is this? Oh, it's, it's a, a hill. hill. OK, now, I have introduced you previously to the anti-gravity roller. Yes. Look at this. What do you think of this, then? It's bigger, but it it's is not big. Work, is it's it? never work, Carol. Boring, boring, boring. Onto the hill, please, Jim. No chance at all it's going to go uphill at all, is it? I don't know. It is. I'll tell you what, you know. That's a bit clever, isn't it? It's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. Do it again? Yeah, let's do, do it again. again. <laughs>
Leave a how to you, mate, and you get it all sorted out. I'm the man for the how. Absolutely. Watch.